Put your kickstands up. Let's roll. <laughs> These two women have everything in common. The same laugh, the same name, the same life. On the left is me at 40. On the right is me at 45. Not knowing this, a graduate class was asked to make comment on these two women. The one will die alone with a house full of cats. The other is a hottie, they said. What made the difference between the two me's? Realizing that I would regret not living life more passionately. So I rewrote my story. Without cats, added a motorcycle, and I went for it full throttle. In 2011, while living in Pennsylvania, I had a grandson born here. I did what any grandmother would do. I jumped on my motorcycle and headed west in 2012. Tawanda, Urban Dictionary, a word used to express extreme excitement while doing something crazy. So I got rid of everything, <laughs> except what I could bungee on my bike, which was everything except for Granny Clampett's rocking chair. I got on that bike, I put the kickstand up, I looked over my shoulder, and I wondered, does this bike make my ass look fat? <laughs> my mobile home is I travel nomad style in gypsy leathers. And yes, yoga mat is required gear. I had to reassure myself that I was making no mistake in this decision. And I kept this necklace on that says live life with no regrets. My version of Zen in the art of motorcycling. My old pack mule sailed gracefully over the Mackinac Bridge, but the highway to hell in Minneapolis was ruthless. It was like running in a stampede of buffalo. I had to keep up with the momentum or be taken out. And the tunnels were excruciatingly thunderous. And when the dust settled, I sat on the curb and cried. And yes, there is crying in motorcycling. In Sturgis, I was left with no clothes on, except for a bathing suit. It was all fun and games swimming until I discovered that my jeans that had the bike key and my cell phone and all the money I possessed in the world were gone. Yeah, you'd have cried too if it happened to you. But I can't explain that crazy story right now, so let's have coffee. But look what we have here. We have portageons and power lines and motorcycles. Metaphors, yes, shit happens. There is enough energy there to light up my life and roll on empowered by motorcycles. <laughs> and ladies, if you're hanging out in Sturgis alone and you want to make some friends, the secret is dress like a skank. <laughs> yeah, these two guys became my trusted buddies and because of them, I gained the courage to ride on gravel. The paved roads are not always the easiest means of travel. And don't let some jackass steal your joy. I'm riding through the park and this guy shows up and tries to steal my popcorn and then he used my rear view mirror to scratch behind his ear and about knocked me off my bike. Yeah, like a lot of guys, even though he was a jackass, I still got a kick out of him. <laughs> Every run is a soul journey. Behind me is the Crazy Horse Monument, a controversial lifetime of chipping away at something sacred. Like my life, it's a work in process. The vision's planned but it's taking years to carve it out. I once said to a stunt rider, I can't wait to ride my bike without butterflies in my stomach. And he said, no, don't you ever lose those butterflies because those butterflies is what keep you alive. Tummy tat, long journey ahead, jeans rubbing right here, think before you wink. Post party, Sturgis, what do you see? I'm the last one there. The box is a care package that I sent to myself of clothes because instead of keeping dirty laundry, I just changed and tossed. And so my friends heckled me. So we know where is Roselle based on her trail of underwear across the country? I trekked up the sacred Bear Butte Mountain with only one bottle of water that I had. When I arrived at the top, I was overwhelmed with serenity and thirst. I cracked open that bottle and chugged. Uh-oh. It was pure vodka. I left there with the most peaceful, easy feeling. <laughs> what happens in Sturgis is not staying in Sturgis. That free spirit rides along in my soul. And any self-respecting biker keeps their bike washed and polished. And these women had my back.
but there are those women who wash bikes and those women who ride them. <laughs> if you want to be a chick on a bike, these biker babes have your back. We are the Bozeman Tenacious Dames Riding Club. Yeah, holla. <laughs> we are a friendship biker support group for all things motorcycle, and not just Harleys. Like us on Facebook. My Honda and I have been through the highlights and the dark nights of my life. Ricky has served as a hearse to carry my parents out into the wild blue yonder. We've outrun many thunderstorms, and we've been attacked by many hailstorms. But we've also leaned into the most exhilarating curves and stopped in the most magnificent moments. This untouched photo reminds me that look there, there's cracks in the road behind me, but it is not paved with regret. And the road up ahead, it's looking pretty shimmering, even the gravel ones. I have something in common with this sage who knew a little bit about moving to Montana. <laughs> Frank Zappa said, I would rather have something to remember than anything to regret. He also said, if you wind up with a boring life because you let someone tell you how to do your shit, well, then you deserve it. <laughs> there are a lot of miles between the me now and the me at 400 pounds. Mm. A motorcycle does not have reverse. And I'm not going to fall into the potholes behind me. Regret me not. Fat bottom girls, let's get on our bikes and ride. Thank you for rolling with me.